Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so I have a really exciting video for you here. And um, yeah, in the previous video, we learned what eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. Um, that is, we talked about what eigenvalues are and therefore their associated eigenvectors. But in this video, which is like super exciting, what we're gonna do is answer this question, which is where does the eigenvalue formula come from? And in case you're like, what eigenvalue formula? Um, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, now you will see uh, in videos to follow this one that if we want to find the eigenvalues for a certain n by n matrix A, what we do is we calculate this determinant and set it equal to zero. So you'll see this formula in action, right? I'll give you several examples with uh, matrices that are two by two and three by three and so on, yeah? But the question is, where does this come from and why does it make sense, right? Well, it makes sense because of this. Well, as I said in the first video, in the previous video, we saw what eigenvalues lambdas are, and we also saw their associated eigenvectors v's, right? Like, so if we have a lambda one that's an eigenvalue, it has an associated eigenvector v1. And what we said uh, in the definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors is the following. Specifically, we said this, which is the lambda is an eigenvalue for the matrix A, A being an n by n matrix, if and only if there exists a non-zero vector v, uh, in the field that we're working with in the n-dimensional space such that the following equation holds which is a times v is equal to lambda times v a couple of things to just backtrack on first this means in math there exists and also as you'll see shortly the fact that uh, the eigenvectors v associated to the eigenvalues lambda not being zero will play a crucial role a crucial role <laughs> and the rest of what is to follow yeah okay 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 also like what this guy means is that like if your matrix a say is a two by two and all of its entries are real numbers then the field f is real numbers and n is showing um, the dimension and so it'd be a two-dimensional uh, field of real numbers right so the n would be two and the field would be r if a has entries that are all real whereas if the matrix a has entries that are complex then the field c would be c instead of um the reals are right so f here is just a more general name for the complex numbers the real numbers whatever a is made of right and the n is saying the dimension so if we're working by uh, with a three by three matrix then n is three okay now what we said is uh the eigenvalue lambda and the eigenvector v have to make this equation true and in fact uh, this is really neat because what we said and what we, sh we should say here also is that like the action of the entire matrix A on the vector V is captured by this single uh, scalar number lambda. So what A does to V is entirely the same as what lambda does to V, just a scalar, right, La uh, lambda. And that's what's really neat about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? Okay, okay, okay. Cool. So we start here, and this is stuff that we already saw in the previous video. It doesn't require like more elaboration. Now, starting with this, what we could do is we could write this. Now, notice that if I come back here and do a little bit of dimensional analysis that at least convinces us that this equation is sensible, then we'd say that A is an n by n matrix, V is an n by 1 matrix, so A times V is an n by 1 matrix, lambda is a scalar, V is an n by 1 matrix, and so both the left side and the right hand side are n by 1 matrices here. Now, over here, what I've done is between lambda and v, I've inserted the n by n identity matrix. I notice that this here is the same as this here. Why? Well, because when I do uh, the n by n identity times v, I just get v. So i sub n times v is just v. So this says lambda times v. But why did I put the i sub n in here? You will see shortly why this is clever. Yeah, because what we can do next is we could say that this here, which is the same as this here, is the same as the following. And, um, well, all I've done to say that this here is the same as this is I've put everything on one side. That's all. But then in our next step, we could factor out a V. And it is here where you will see why writing I sub N between lambda and V was crucial. Because, now, once I factor out a V from the left-hand side of this equation, I get this, right? But then... Now I have V here, which is N by one, as we already said, but in order for A minus lambda times I sub N to make sense, lambda times I sub N needs to be an N by N matrix because A is an N by N matrix. And so we can only su subtract two matrices that are of the same dimension. And so it is for this reason, 
why it was really clever to have i sub n right here yeah okay cool now remember we said the v is not equal to zero so v is a non-zero matrix so we have one matrix this here is just a single matrix if we work it out right like we have this matrix times v okay so it's very tempting right now to say that since v is not zero this matrix here must be equal to zero but that's careless thinking and this is why well what we can say instead of saying that this is equal to zero is we can say that this here is not invertible so this here does not have an inverse to put it differently like i had an awesome version of this video already recorded but like on this part like the double negative threw me off and so i had to re-record it and like in fact at the start of this video i was like hey guys like i have an exciting video i said that enough times over 10 times to where like i was kind of like it was kind of hard to be authentic when i said it was exciting because i'd already re-recorded this video like 10 times but anyway 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 uh, i re-recorded it because it this double negative and so i'll say that again because v is not equal to zero we have this matrix times v is equal to zero the only thing we can say that this here does not have an inverse that is it is not invertible we cannot say that this here is equal to zero why you say well because uh because uh first um just to see this easier and to say what we said easier let's just call this here as i said which is a single matrix let's call it b then what we're saying is uh, b times v is equal to zero but again because we said v is not equal to zero b here we cannot assume is equal to zero because we can have two non-zero matrices multiplied and still get the zero matrix and therefore we can't automatically just say b is equal to zero that is we can't just say this here is equal to zero however we can say that this here is not invertible that is this here does not have an inverse and we'll see exactly why we can say that this does not have an inverse but why we cannot say that this is equal to zero let's start with the latter let's see why we can't just assume that this is equal to zero well for that to convince you i said that we can have two matrices that are non-zero multiplied to get a zero matrix so let's just provide an example of exactly that and that will suffice for uh, showing why we can't just assume that uh, the matrix b and therefore this is equal to zero because we can take b to be this matrix and we can take v to be this matrix we can multiply two non-zero matrices and still get zero because if you multiply this matrix and this matrix you'll get the zero matrix but notice obviously that this is a non-zero matrix and this too is a non-zero matrix but as i said the fact that uh this here is equal to zero while v not being equal to zero will necessarily mean that this here which is b is not invertible that is b does not have an inverse to see why well let's assume that b does have an inverse that is let's assume that this here is invertible well this here and therefore b is invertible because if we can say that it is invertible then we're, we could do the following. Well, we could start with B times V is equal to zero and multiply both sides by B inverse because B is invertible. And obviously on the left side, we just get V and on the right side, we get zero. So we're saying V is equal to zero. But wait, I lost count of how many times I said V is non-zero. And therefore, as we wanted, this here is invertible. But saying that B, which is A minus lambda times I sub N is invertible, saying that is the same thing as saying that the determinant of A minus lambda I lambda times I sub N is equal to zero. Because to mean that this here is invertible, sorry, this here does not have an inverse, which is to say that this here isn't invertible, <laughs> is to say that the determinant of it is equal to zero. Because matrices that are not invertible that is matrices that don't have inverses have determinants that are equal to zero so i hope this made sense and if it didn't ask questions and yeah i couldn't deliver it any less passionate than this so hopefully you know yeah um keep watching take care